Railroad just dropped off three cars for me. And so we're going to do an inspection on those three. This car came in yesterday. I've already done the inspection on it. So we're just going to do my normal initial inspection on these three cars. Like I said earlier, I generally do two inspections. First is my initial. I'm required by code to do an initial from the ground. I don't, I'm not required to go up top and do anything, just from the ground. Common things, obvious things that you can find from the ground. And one of the most common things we're gonna run into is having to replace placards. I use the rigid plastic ones. I prefer them. They're more expensive, but I prefer them. I know guys that they prefer to use just the cheap paper ones and you get them for, I don't know, somewhere between 10, 20 cents a placard, especially if you buy them in bulk. If that's what you want to do, great, but you have to decide what you want to do. Plus you have to decide what warrants the replacement of a placard and how faded is faded you can say you got to replace a faded placard you have to decide and somewhat define a faded placard for your own personal use but essentially a placard it has to have the right un number and has to have the right class number i've gotten a few in with no class number i've gotten some in with a three and they're allowed to send us in they can sometimes you get a, a generic one a really blank one where they either took a magic marker and wrote in what they needed um, i when i get them in i just never let them leave my place simply because it is just it's habit and mild paranoia i just don't want i want one less reason for any of these cars to catch any unwarranted attention on their way back to the refineries so come in they hooked up to this car want to make sure the air valves open want to make sure that glad hands are connected you just visually look to make sure the knuckle pin is in look at that and decide what kind of shape it's in you know that's a pretty good one then you see the car number up there and then you got your water capacity that same car number needs to match on the other end and both sides and if it's on the top it's got to match what's up on the top you visually just want to look at this these get destroyed sometimes when they hump cars in a major yard and i've seen them i've seen this thing smashed this thing ripped off these things shoved in several inches this head plate crushed in the weld split uh, these things damaged when you run into that you just take pictures of everything you photograph everything and that's how you protect yourself one thing that's interesting is over here you see that sometimes you see these inclusions it's just inclusions there you can actually feel them they're not bad enough or deep enough for me to actually you know have the railroad do a replace you know, ask for a re replacement or inspection but it's just something you got to look at sometimes i've had a couple of them come in where they're actually slightly deformed this part of the steel is actually deformed because of the inclusions those i take a picture of and those i send into uh ns mechanical and let them make the decision and you come here and you want to look at your bearings it, these things sling grease these bearings sling grease you they I talked to a mechanical inspector for the FRA. He said he doesn't care if they sling grease. He cares that these caps are all in one piece. So if you're if there's a chunk broken off, he said then you need to report that. And then you've got this reflective tape. It pretty much needs to be on, or if you see it peeling, or you see some of them fall that have fallen off, there's nothing there. It's not a deal breaker to ship. You just photograph it and send it on up the food chain so they can notify the car owner so the car owner is made aware of it here's our inspection information this is the column that we really care about we want to see when they're due right now none of these are due and this is 2021 so none of these are due here's your dot number 
there's i don't know how many three four six seven different dot number cars that are allowed to handle product to come into us uh i really don't pay much attention to it i i guess part of me just doesn't care i figured it's come into me pretty safe it comes into me meets all the requirements uh i don't really study that one too much you want to look at your brake shoes or i mean not your brake shoes your springs every once in a while these cars you know all these cars rock all the times they go down the track every once in a while one of these springs will actually pop out partly or quite a bit of it will actually be sticking out about over here when it shows up to your place the way I deal with it is I go and I offload the car, get all the weight off, take a take a, a heavy hammer, and usually one or two hits, and it'll reseed itself. Um, these things here float up and down, and they'll also float side to side a little bit to help provide some stability for the car. FRA says the same thing: as long as it's inside here and not moved out, they don't care about it. So I've never had this. I've had several spring issues. Sometimes a, you know, I had one spring completely snapped right off. Um, but we also don't inspect these springs on the inside. And there's an, in, an inner spring. This is the outer spring. There's an inner spring. We don't inspect those either because it's we're just looking. You know, we're not a repair shop. We're just looking for problems. And we're looking for the obvious ones. Here's your shoe. Uh, and you can tell by looking at that there's a lot of tread looks good to me same thing here you just want to look at this one looks good here are some uh bolts that help hold this assembly together i've had a couple of them where these bolts were just kind of bent and hanging out well photograph it send it in to the railroad let them know about it and same thing we're looking this outer jacket is required by code to be weather tight not airtight but weather tight essentially meaning it has got to when the rain and the snow as it comes rolling down this jacket you don't want it being able to go up inside to the actual pressure vessel itself or get inside here and soak and damage the uh, insulation that's inside here so we just want to look you know we just want to look just looking for obvious stuff You'd be surprised the amount of corrosion you'll find or gaps or splits or damage. And then when it comes to your placard also, you just want to make sure the placard is not sloppy or floppy, wanting to fall down. Some of them on the end, it's common to get them on the end that are just laying down on their side, practically laying on their face. Um, you got to document that. got to send it in. And then usually I put them in place with zip ties or wire so they're up and they're readable. And once I've notified everybody, somebody else can catch it and deal with it down the line. Your lettering, it has to say this, the DOT, once the non-odorized, under DOT guidelines, you can send odorized product in a car marked non-odorized. But you cannot send non-odorized product in a car that is only marked odorized. A secondary reason for that, I've been told this, I've never seen it in writing, but I've been told this by people farther up the food chain than me, that one of the reasons why they have these marked as non-odorized is to is to help out a first responder. If somebody says, hey, I, I think there's a propane leak out here at this property. First responder shows up. Oh, it's not odorized. Well, I can't rely just on my sense of smell. Maybe I got to do a more intensive search, you know, or their job is to call in me and have me request to go do a more intensive search. Uh, but the primary number one reason is the dot documents now if your car comes and it doesn't have non-odorized take a picture of it it's not a deal breaker this is a deal breaker with the fra 
these letters have to be at least 3.9 inches tall. Shit, I don't know 3.9, but I know four. So about four inches. And if they come in and they're not four inches tall, and again, I'm not breaking out a tape measure, but I kinda know four inches and that's not four inches. You'll do the same thing. Um, and if it's not, then you have to take pictures of it and you'll probably have to get a mobile repair unit to come out on site and then they'll come and they'll put the appropriate uh, labeling on there and then we walk along another thing we're required to do is we have to inspect for the possibility that some body put a bomb on here i don't know what the hell a bomb looks like but i do know what the car looks like normally and that's all i look for there's certain things that are common, universal, and standard on a rail car. That's all I look for. So when I see something that doesn't match, that's how you know you got something to look at. Something is different, and you gotta you gotta investigate it somewhat. Uh, shoot it, set it on fire, kick it. You know you could try that, or um, assume it's dangerous and call somebody else out for a second opinion. Uh, Chemtrek is not required to be on your car it's nice to have on your car the car owner may insist it be on the car but if you come and some dumbass tagger has spray painted that over it's not a deal breaker you don't have to really do anything that car can still ship Your car needs to have a plate C decal. That plate C is a designator of saying that a plate C car is within a certain range of how long it is, how wide it is, how tall it is, and essentially it's weight load. And so it, it says all these tracks, all the mainline tracks, they can handle certain cars of certain plate numbers and certain plate sizes, but if it's an oddball, they need to know but we all we care about is you got to have a plate c and plate c is all is always i found somewhere near your initial car letters and numbers and so there you got your car number your uh prefix and the actual number itself that has to match what's on the ends um then we get back here there's part of our brake piston our brake assembly area there uh, then again we're just going to look at this we're going to look at our shoes we're going to look at these two bolts we're going to look at this everything looks all right there's nothing bad nothing looks see that gap that's still weather tight because the stuff's going to drip down and fall somewhere right around in here you just don't i've had cars come in you could literally stick a fist up inside there i just documented it just talk, took a picture of it, showed it, sent it in, just so they would know, just to protect me. And so, that looks good, looks good, that looks good. Uh, here's your uh, brake control valve. If you take your training from Rail Safe Training, they'll explain you can, this is what you can do to um, manually dump the air out of your air tanks. This is a bypass. You could bypass this car in, in air-wise from the uh, line. Then we're going to come down here, and we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to look at this, look at this. We're just looking. And you want to make sure that's not broken, that's not broken. Make sure this thing's not hanging down. Make sure all these things are just here. And then you want to look at your brake. Um, just so you know, the end of the car with the brake is called the B end. The other end without the brake is the A end. And then this is kind of dirty, but it's not that bad. And if you compare it to a new one, it's faded, but for my place, that's not too faded. But you have to kind of decide. Also, I have to factor in the preferences of my FRA inspector. And you're going to have, if you end up meeting and knowing your FRA inspector, you're going to know there's certain things that they are going to cue, to clue in on.
and that's going to draw their eye and things that they, they consider a personal priority. Well, one of them that my FRA inspector has is he wants all these placards to be clear, clean, visible. I mean, you know, so that's not bad. And it's not obstructed very much by all this other stuff. And that's another thing you got to look is, is your placard obstructed? If it is obstructed, well, what the hell are you going to do about it? I'm not cutting this off and moving that. I'm not cutting that off, not authorized to do it. All I do is take pictures of it. Take a picture, send it in so they can notify the car owner, and it protects me. Because I documented it, I showed there was a problem, and I set up a warning. And that's just, that's just how I, I do it. I get away with it. So this is good. Everything's here. Nothing looks to be falling down. Now this one here, I don't like it. It's a totally subjective decision, and it's my decision to make, is I replace it. It's talking about damage. Look at that. That's kind of damaged. That's been damaged. And it's all been done by humping a car. And that's, so, you just got to factor all this. We have a Double shelf coupler, a normal coupler, doesn't have this at the top, doesn't have this at the bottom. This is all designed to help prevent another car from, when they hump cars or by an accident or something, you don't want this draw bar on another car coming underneath, lifting this, coming over the top, trying to cause damage over there. And you will see some of these are just beat to hell. Um, so, it's a good thing they're there. Um, here's your air, one of your air tanks. And I didn't, I wasn't able to record to let you hear it, but when the railroad disconnects, they do what's called dynamiting the line. And they don't shut off the air valve on the last car, and they pull away, and the, all the air just dumps right out immediately. It's called dynamiting. Well, this tank is a... It's a two-part tank on the inside. And so when you dynamite it, they dump half the one side of the tank just gets dumped completely. What that does is it puts a hard set on all the brakes. So automatically all the brakes are now set and they're set as tight as they can be. And it's required by code that the brakes have to hold for at least three minutes before it loses enough air to where the brakes back off. So that's what the railroad does. They'll set hand brakes and then they dynamite to leave these cars in as safe a position as possible when they're done. And then what we do is if, uh, if we want to, you can manually drain the other half of the air in that valve with this lever, just like the one on the other side. You can pull it or push it, and then that'll dump all the product inside here. Here's another one. Let's take a look here. Yeah, I mean, it's my subjective decision, but my opinion is the only one that matters, so. Oh, get in there. I feel better about that. And so we're gonna look at these, nothing obviously bad. Brake shoe looks good, looks good, looks good. I don't see anything obvious in there. All my dates are good. Uh, same thing. There's a gap there, but it's still weather tight because what's going to drip down is just going to make its way down. You can see another gap down here, but same thing. We still qualify as weather tight. And then look here. See that brake shoe is getting kind of thin. It's just at the top there. The rest of that shoe is in good shape. I'm not going to report that one. And then this brake piston, when they dynamite the line and the brake is set, um, this piston rod comes all the way out. When they put air back into it, when, the, when this other company brings their engine down and they hook up air and you pressure everything up, this piston will, will slowly, slowly, slowly make its way in and then it'll bottom out to here. So the local crews, when they come to pick up empties, that's one of the things they have to prove, is they have to prove that all the pistons move in and out. Uh, just airlines, linkage. Oh, just kind of looking around. 
Yeah. Okay, here's something I want to talk on. There's a difference between hobos and taggers. That's a hobo. This is just some dumbass tagger. And you see how that dumbass tagger kind of got into here a little bit? That's not a deal breaker. Hobos, as a rule, don't interfere with the decals, as a rule. And as a rule, hobos have something close to art, and they put some pride in what they do. Most taggers, their art is just mischief. But you'll see that, and you'll, you'll run into it, and some of them are really bad. Some of them cover an entire car. I, got, I think one of these is worse than the others. Uh... Yeah, more taggers. And they kind of covered some of this up, but none of it's a deal breaker in my opinion. And you see how that faded? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture with my phone and I'm just going to send that in to uh, the people I get the cars from and then I'm going to ask them to pass this on to the car owner so that they know that their lettering is faded. And then we'll go see what the other side looks like. And then we come here. That's not bad. Those are there. Shoe looks good. These look good. That looks fine. That looks fine. Everything in here. Another hobo. Uh, same thing, these handles, sometimes these handles break. Sometimes that, that pin will come out and they get really sloppy. Sometimes these leak, sometimes that's loose. That's all we're looking for is just the obvious stuff. And then your glad hands. Uh, and then your hoses, you just want to look at the hoses. Sometimes you'll see a hose where it's really, uh, the outside coating here has split out. I just notify the railroad. That's all I do. Um, I don't, unless I'm told otherwise, I don't see that it's a deal breaker why I can't offload it and then release it. And then we've got this here. Then you'll look, look at this. Broken, 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 on down. All of these are broken too. So I humped this car and smashed all of this. It's still substantively sound. I'm not going to report it. I, I don't see a need to report it. Uh, but what I will do, because I am paranoid, is I'm going to take another picture. Get up here, go to that, live off. I'm going to take a picture of some of this. Why did that do that? What the hell's your problem? Oh, photo, what's going on? Anyway, no, no lie. Live off, there we go. Oh, and that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to send it in to them. And I'm going to say, hey, it arrived. this is the arrival condition of this car. See how somebody, this was faded, and somebody just updated that that's all they got to do on that other end and then is this bad enough i don't know that's not bad that's pretty clean that's pretty good shape and then we'll look right over here that's not bad that's also part of the reason i use these heavier stiff plastic ones because they're it's more difficult for them to get lifted out of here by just normal going down the tracks then just check it out want to make sure everything's pretty solid yeah, looks good looks fine um, this one I think is too faded in my opinion so that's it's all subjective you may decide that that's got plenty of life left to it and that is your decision and 
you just need to decide that and be comfortable with it and unless the people that either pay your salary or fine you tell you different you do what you are convinced is best uh that's good those are good this is solid no breaks that's solid that's solid my dates are all good uh yeah this fra aip is essentially it's a standard trying to limit how far up this information is some of these older cars there's information up there in the upper quarter of the car you can barely see it from the ground it's still on the side of the car but it's up awfully high the purpose i was told of the fra aip standard was to try to make it to where everything was lower to the ground more uniform easier to see for a guy standing on the ground uh like i said everything else here looks good Dumbass tagger. Look what that dumbass did. Covered over my plate C, that retardo. Anyway, um, I'm gonna have to take a picture of that. And take a picture of the car number so I know which one's associated with it. Ah, here we go. Here's something interesting. See this? It's it's that ceramic fiberglass insulation up there that's part of the fire prevention. That's what it is. It's just ceramic fiber. It's about roughly half an inch to 0.65 of an inch. Unless it's hanging down in sheets, which can you shoot in on that? Can you see that furry little thing right there? That is a chunk that came off one of my cars needless to say i reported that one because it shouldn't be losing chunks but little bits of it's one thing you can try if possible shove it back in there but it's not necessarily a deal breaker so we come over here uh those are good 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 don't see anything obviously wrong with any of this. You can see a little bit. See that? It's kind of gappy, kind of kind of ugly looking. But it's still essentially weather tight. It's still gonna serve its same function, so that's nothing to complain about. And then yeah, you see that. It's not uncommon for these things to have a lot of slop in them. Not a deal breaker, just something to be aware of. And that's not too bad. Uh, everything here is not too bad. Uh, they said, now this car is not my car. This is the other company's car. That's part of the reason, that's part of how you tell if you got your brakes set tight enough. Not whether. See, I can crank on it more. It's not a strength competition. It's a, it's a tightness is all we're after. Take all the slack out, keep it tight. If you can do that, it's plenty tight. Even though you can crank it down more, it's uh, not necessary. This is the end car. Railroad came, shoved them that way. Railroad left that way. They dynamited the line. That means they intentionally left this open. This has to be closed before they can hook the locomotive up to the other end. So. Just a simple quarter of a turn. Some of these are ridiculously tight. Some are so sloppy they barely hold air. If you are having to close or open one of these valves and it's really, really, really tight, best thing I found to do, lift this up and then you just bump it. If you hook this up and this is really, really, really tight and you got air coming this way and you're gonna air up the cars behind you, 
if this is really stiff and you jerk it, you're going to release even a small, even you don't think it's enough air, but you can release enough air quickly enough that brake control valve will sense the pressure drop. Boom, it'll dump all of its air and then it'll dump the air of every other car heading toward the engine. So when you do these things and they're stiff, you just do it, you, you just do it and you, and you try to control it. Also, even if everything works good and you hook it up, all you want to do is crack it to get it to start going. Then you do it again and again and again because you can open this up and even if everything works good, you can open it up so fast that you can trigger a pressure drop inside your locomotive and then that'll immediately dump all the air and now they're going to be convinced you're stupid and they're going to cuss you under their breath and now they got to shut down and then they got to re-equalize their tanks and then pressure it back up so open and close slowly this car this cut car this commodity doesn't require placketing so we're uh and then here's as a rule you always leave your knuckles open at the at an end at one end or the other that's just what i do so let's go down back down to our car so now we have to we're now doing the other side of our cars um everything looks fine don't see anything screaming out of the ordinary uh double check make sure these are all still within date that one's not bad uh springs are all look good shoes look good All right. There we are. Nice one. It's open. Uh, it's good. Everybody looks good. That looks good. These look fine. Like I said, that's the biggest thing we're looking for, is we're looking for something out of the ordinary. But you have to become familiar with ordinary. Once you're familiar and comfortable and understand ordinary, it's easy to pick up the out of ordinary. Ah, uh, yeah. This, this was the one on the other side that had the faded uh, car number, that seven five whatever, and this is the one where they put that sticker on well we're going to send it in and we're going to notify them that it's faded this thing's scheduled to go to a shop to have its pressure relief valve check and service equipment check so they won't do anything with this car but i'm going to tell them that it's there hopefully somebody somewhere down the line will make a note of this and keep it with this car so when it goes to the shop they'll fix it uh, there's no such thing as, oh, they'll go to the shop and the shop will find every problem and fix it. Yeah, probably not. Uh, but that's why we document. Uh, another hobo. And not sure who did this, but there's somebody who did that. At least see, they were smart enough not to cover that up. And once again, we are left with a very faded car number. So, send that in. And just look at this. Everything looks fine. I don't see anything bad, bad. There's another one. It's got a big gap. But it, it's still, it's for all, all practical purposes, it's still weather tight, weather tight enough. Uh, got a pin, my linkage is all good, that seems good. Uh, I got my dates, they're still good. Everything looks fine there. Everything looks fine here. Uh, don't see anything out of the ordinary. Uh, 
Yeah. Hobo. That might be a hobo. That's the plate C. Got my other numbers. That's good. Those are there. The springs all look good. That looks fine. My caps aren't broken. That. Tight. Somebody's replaced that one at some point or another. Uh, that's really it. And that's going to conclude a basic initial rail car inspection.